Hello everyone, Kira today and welcome along to another Gran Turismo Sport video and yes, I've just signed my new FIA manufacturer, I've gone with Mazda. Gone with a manufacturer a little bit different. I've raced with Aston before, raced with Chevrolet, raced with Porsche, never raced with Mazda and I know that the Group 3, the RX Vision, it sounds amazing, it looks pretty cool, it's pretty good on the tyres and pretty good on the fuel. It's not the fastest but that might give me some options sometimes to see something a little bit unusual with the strategy. And this race is going to be a case in point. So we're here at Catalonia for the opening round. 10 times tyre wear, 4 times fuel. So quite aggressive on the tyre wear and fuel to think about as well. And I'm thinking the Mazda might just make an alternative strategy possible here. And that's going to be the no stop. So most other people will be going for the one stop using both the hard and the soft tyre. But I'm going to just use the hard tyre and we'll see how it goes. Now here for qualifying, usual FIA shenanigans, how I've missed them. No one wanted to be at the front of the train. And I'm going to slot in just behind this Aston Martin here. The driver ahead, a, a Brave Bat Axe 96, rolls off the tongue, is a ranked number two in this lobby. So I'm thinking he might be a pretty good driver, he or she. So they're going to follow them round, and I think this season's slipstream in quality is going to be so key to the Mazda. Because it doesn't quite have that power down the straights that a car like the Aston will have, or all the Corvettes. We're going around here, it's all pretty good so far. It's a little bit messy around turn 1 and turn 2. Let's see what happens here. And yeah, the Aston goes a little bit wide, but no real harm to me. I take my usual line, the Aston darts back in, I'm going to get some slipstream. Coming to this really awkward hairpin, so easy to go deep in, for some strange reason, the Aston bails out, so I don't know if he's just not happy with this lap, and it's going to start again, but that wasn't ideal, I didn't get a slip for the rest of the lap, we're going to go round, and do a 143.6, which isn't atrocious, but I think I really need to be into the lower 143s, but when I had a look at the times here, well you can't actually, you can't see, but I can promise you, it was incredibly close. We'll have to go to another view. Here we go. Look how close that is. From 4 to 10th was about... 4 to 11th was 2 tenths. Um, FIA quality just never ceases to amaze me with how, how close it is. So we're going to start the race here in 10th place. Now make a little bit of a mistake off the line. Not really off the line, but out of the auto drive get a bit of wheel spin. I was worried about the last corner. I had traction control on, but I still made a mess of it. And that's dropped me out of the slip quite significantly. So the slip is 7.5 tenths and I'm 1.1 seconds behind. So I've got to make up that ground. And on this strategy, I need to fuel save and tyre save like crazy. I need to fuel save particularly, particularly much more severely than any other car. We'll be pitting anyway, and they can take on fuel at the pits the way they need to. I'm not going into the pits. This is a non-stop race. Do not pass go, whatever. Do not enter the pits. Straight to the flag, and I need to save all the fuel I can. Um, I worked out beforehand, it was something like 5.8% of fuel a lap is all I could afford to use. Now, I know the first few laps are going to be a bit difficult because you do want to try and keep your position. You do want to keep up with the cars and slipstream. But this was even more difficult being out of that magical seven and a half tenths. I'm really having to work hard here, much harder than I wanted to catch up and try and get into that gap. Now I started P10, but as I said, there was only about a tenth or so in it um, to about fourth place. So it seemed to be quite an evenly matched lobby in the midfield. And if I can pull off the strategy, um, everyone else is going to have to dive into the pits, change their tyres, maybe add a bit of fuel and I'll just keep going round and yes I'll be slower because I'll be fuel saving yes I'll be slower because my tyres will be more worn at the end of the race but if I can just hold on to that um, track position advantage that could play huge dividends so we'll see how it goes it's going to be an interesting race to work it out because like I said the midfield did seem to be pretty even on pace when it came to quality and we're back in slip now so behind this Porsche and I noticed this Porsche got quite a high amount of points from the previous race about 260 or something if I remember so I was thinking maybe the Porsche is going to do a non-stop, didn't they about anyone else? Um, I seen pretty much everyone else was going to be the hard tyre around me but I suspected the Porsche head might be another car for the no-stop so if I could sit in a slip 
we can almost work together, team no stop. And uh, yeah, maintain that trap position about everyone else jumping into the pits. I've got a Jaguar behind me for company BFR Hunter. And behind him, I think it was a Mazda. So I'm not sure if the Mazda Codex Rumi was um, also doing it on top. You can see here, we're catching up with the pack ahead. So that goes up to about fourth place. So things are looking pretty good for us at the moment. I'm going to zoom ahead to lap four, where the alliance with this Jaguar behind kind of breaks. So the Jaguar is going to go for a stay wide to try and minimise the time lost. But then it becomes a two for one situation. And here comes Carry WRX in the Corvette. I've raced against Carry now for, gosh, maybe a number of years on, on G Sport FIA from the Czech Republic. Um, I think he originally hails, but he's under a British flag here. And yeah, so following Carry in the, in the Corvette, he gets loads of swaz over the chicane there. But not a bad place to be. I'm looking at that Porsche thinking, right, that guy's on the no stop, I think. And I'm not too far behind him. I'm not going to say no to cars passing me so I can sit in their slip and save some fuel because I'm I'm way over budget on fuel. Actually, I really need to bring that back, otherwise I won't get to the end of the race. I'm pretty committed to this strategy now, having lost, well, just losing a lot of time fuel saving. So I was never in fuel map one for this race, apart from right at the beginning. And this is the thing that you kind of need to weigh up when you go for an alternate strategy like this. If you think they have, if you think you have the ultimate pace on the kind of regular strategy, you know it can be very frustrating to go to an alternate strategy where you deliberately have to drive slower and hope the strategy works in your favour. Now we're going to jump ahead to what is this lap number six, and you can see Carrie's going to go for move on the Porsche. So after all that, because the Porsche was about what four positions ahead. There's only now seven tenths separating us, so I'm feeling pretty good at this point of the race. Um, the pace, my pace inherently doesn't seem too bad, although it's very hard to tell when you're fuel saving a lot and tyre saving a lot. And yeah, I'm, I've got to expect all of the one-stop cars to filter past me, because they are going to be faster than me at this point in the race, and I've just got to hope that in the second part of the race it, it comes back to me. So yeah, got to got to understand that cars are going to come past and. That's something you need to deal with when, you, when you're doing this ultimate strategy. I'm going to zoom ahead here to lap number seven. And yeah, we've got a Fools at least behind. I think he's in a Jaguar. Let's have a look. He slides up inside. Yeah, he's in a Jaguar. And he's been coming through the field. I think he started last in this race, actually. So he's really shot through. He's definitely in the one stop. Um, BFR Hunter's gone wide there. So there's two Jazz going side by side. Not really ideal for me because I just want to minimise the time lost, but... I do think about following Fools release through here on the inside, give me a little bit of a nudge. But going to be no dice. I've got Codex behind me. He's also in a Mazda. So two Jags, two Mazdas, two by two. And definitely be beginning to be a bit scrappy now. The people ahead might be on tyres that are more worn because they're not, they don't need to conserve them as much. So that might explain some of the slithering around. As people jostle for position. But again, yeah, if you look at the minimap on the top right, the front two, Raul Lopez and Tentafest driver, they're, they're long gone. But uh, the rest of the field is pretty much on this straight. I mean, the whole field is... The whole uh, 20 cars are pretty condensed. Always away in FIA. It's the closest racing I find you can get in in GT Sport in, in the Sport Mode system. As a Jaguar has still going side by side. Not really impacting us. We're just doing our thing and we're going to be getting that slip. It's been a change of position behind as well. So Raul Lopez dives into the pits. He's the first one to show his hand, presumably on the soft tyre, um, because he's starting at the front of the grid. Sensible thing to do. And yeah, Fool's Release dives in. So Fool's Release was on the soft tyre. That that would explain how they were able to carve their way through the field. But they're now going to be on the hard until the end of the race. And pretty critical moment this, because we lost the slip of the car ahead which means the Porsche is, is going to overtake us very easily. I'm going to tr try and prevent it from becoming a two-for-one situation. We'll follow the Porsche 3. Yeah, that was a pretty critical moment because we got overtaken and, and fell back a little bit. I've zoomed ahead here to lap 10 as uh, we filtered back another position as the Mazda ahead of us got three. But I'm expecting to see a load of people dive into the pits. And I have to be honest, at this stage, I'm feeling pretty good because... 
I'm pretty much neck and neck with the midfield. You are all diving into the pits now. And I'm now got a pit stop in hand, if that makes sense. So all the time they're spending into the pits, I'm not spending. And I've just got to make sure I lose less time on the worn tyres and doing the fuel saving. So this is like the no stop crew ahead of us. We've got the Porsche, as we suspected. And we've got this Mazda, who's really moved up the field. I wasn't expecting this Mazda to be doing the no-stop. Um, that's quite frightening pace to carve through the field like that and be on a no-stop. That's where it's going to be. And then we've got Raul Lopez behind, who's the first of the one-stoppers. And then it'll be the 10th best driver. And I think Prima Tiger Hayes will be kind of the first of what we can notionally call the midfield. Mazda ahead getting a lot of swaz. You can see him in fuel map 3 here. I'm, I'm really desperately trying to save fuel. It says 4.9 laps remaining. And that's not going to cut it. Because we've still got about, what, 6.5 laps left. So we're, we're quite significantly behind, actually, on the fuel. Which is going to be a big problem. Going around this corner onto the bat straight. A corner that the Master is very good at, actually. It does give me hope for the rest of the season that the Master might be a very nice handling car really glued to apexes you can see that the master driver seems to be catching the porsche driver so it shows how much pace that master driver has we're going to skip ahead here and we've been caught so anyway the gates here comes tenta fess he's overtaken raul lopez on the way which is very impressive and we're going to let him through no trouble because we just want to sit in a slip we're not racing these guys they're in their own battle for for the lead we just want to do as well as we can in the midfield. Raul Lopez is one to get going to get through pretty short order as well. Now, keeping an eye on my fuel, so I'm not flicking to the radar all the time. Just kind of anticipating when Raul is going to make that move. And I suspected he might make it here, but it's kind of hard to tell. You could just see there. So I turned in, but didn't turn in too tight. Didn't get over the curb just in case he was there. Turned out he was there, which is which is all fine. Right, so we're going to duck back in, and we can see now that with about four laps to go the midfield are six seconds away so that's pretty tight i'm going to zoom ahead here to lap 15 and old rhinus rhinus tech tits behind has has caught me so the midfield are well and truly here with about two and a half laps to go and at this point i, I was sensing that this gamble hadn't really paid off on the strategy if we we're honest um from qualifying p10 with, with not the best lap, but it might not be the best lap for the people around us, and being very close to P4, you know, the pace was actually decent here on the soft tyre. And it's going to be a painful end to the race here because we are just going to drop back. Everyone racing us is on A, on fresh or fresher tyres, but B, and perhaps more importantly, not having to do any fuel saving probably. That they've, they've splashed and dashed with whatever they needed to get to the end. Whereas I'm having to fuel safe quite aggressively. As a little bit of side to side, but unusual place to overtake, so I was robust in the defence. But no doubt he'll get past me pretty early on because I'm in a lower fuel map in the Mazda. Just, it's not going to be pretty. It's, it's, it's going to be a massacre, basically. So dropping back now to P8, we've got that Jaguar behind us in, in P9, a few cars battling behind us. But I think, fair to say at this point, that. The strategy hasn't worked out. You can see Hunter's done a 144.1. Whereas I'm... If I'm being generous to myself, I'm in the 150s. So... I'm at least 5 seconds... Uh, losing 5 seconds a lap. I mean, that is huge. 5 seconds a lap. So... If it was 2 or 3, it might have worked. But 5 seconds isn't going to cut it. So in hindsight, this strategy, this gamble, just has not paid off for this round. Um, do I regret trying it? No. Would I try it again next time? Probably not um, for this combo. Very difficult to make it work. Kudos to anyone that has made it work. So if you have done this round and you did go for the nose stop and make it work, do let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested to know how it went for you, but I just couldn't make it work this time. So we're going to finish in P11, which is kind of average. Um, where were we? About six seconds off P7. So we gave it a shot, we tried to do the Hail Mary, go for the no stop and just couldn't make it work, losing too much time at the end of the race. Probably needed to look after my tyres better, if we're honest, and 
at the beginning I probably should have not tried to desperately catch up and go to fuel map one at the beginning just kept to the fuel saving plan because it, it hurt me way more at the end to be in fuel map five and six trying to keep enough fuel to get over the line but there we go they don't always go your way and I'm going to be making videos of all my FA races this season showing you some hopefully interesting strategy options and whether I can make it work or not this one we couldn't make it work but glad we tried it hope you enjoyed it seeing a kind of different approach to the FIA rates do let me know in the comments if you've got any thoughts about the video anything you'd like to see do feel free to like subscribe all of that jazz if you're enjoying the content but otherwise thank you so much for joining and I will see you next time